Today we are going to talk about the inverse trig functions. You might recall that inverses took and switched the x and y's, so we have to think of how that is going to relate to a sine, cosine, and tangent function. Now the inverse trig function is used to find an angle measure. They can be written in two ways. You can write them as this arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. Just put an arc in front, meaning I'm looking for the angle. You can also put this little negative one notation next to any of our trig functions. They mean exactly the same thing. They say what angle measure gives you that value. So an inverse trig function is used to find an angle measure. So let's think for just a minute. In the trig functions, the domain is some measure of an angle. At 45 degrees, we get a ratio of square root of 2 over 2. So that's the way a trig function works. An inverse trig function, we're given that ratio. Here, we have square root of 2 over 2 as an answer. What angle measure gave me that? So that's the difference. So if you look here, the inverse sine of 1 half is pi over 6. Why? Well, we know the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, so it switches in. The inverse cosine of negative 1 is pi. The inverse tangent of 1 is square root of uh, a pi over 4, 45 degrees. So it goes backwards. So it's important that we can be able to go backwards. Now the problem with going backwards is we have so many places that we can land and get a sine value of one half. We have millions of millions, an infinite number of places that we get a sine value of one half. So what do we pick? So it's very important that we know the restrictions on the inverse functions. Now what we really have to know here are the ranges. So we only are going to look for answers for a sign between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. That's going to be the same thing for a tangent. That's going to be the same thing for a cosecant. Here's the difference. Tangent, we can't use the pi over 2s because they are undefined. So these are open circles. Hard to see. Sorry about that. And then the cosecant doesn't work when the sign is zero. That's an open circle. But those three are all related. So sine, tangent, and cosecant kind of use the same values. Also, the cosine uses anything between zero and pi. Cotangent uses the same thing, except we throw out the zero and pi because that makes it undefined. And secant works the same. It works everywhere but pi over 2 because that makes that undefined. So this is just telling us where we get to look for the answers. It's just narrowing it down for us. So don't make it harder than it has to be. We are either using the first and the fourth quadrant. We're going to call the, the first quadrant the positives and the fourth quadrant the negatives. You'll notice it goes from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And then for cosine, cotangent, and secant, we're uh, using values from 0 to pi. And I'll draw this picture or write this range on the board for you so that you have it to look at. And I also included a unit circle so you had it. Okay, so given the fact that we know that the uh, sine, the tangent, 
and the cosecant all kind of go together. Uh, we're going to just look for values between positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And then uh, the cosine, the secant, and the cotangent kind of go together. Okay, so I've included that for you. So if we want to answer the questions like example one, let's look at our first one here. We are looking for a theta. Now, specifically, we are looking for where the sine of theta equals one half, and we get to look either somewhere between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. So our answer is either in the first or the fourth quadrant. Well, if we look at our unit circle, the sine is our y value. It is equal to that at pi over 6. So the answer is pi over 6. So I want to see this, and then I want to see the angle measure. And I want you to refer to the angle measure as theta. Okay? So what's this one going to give us? Well, I'm thinking that the sine of theta is negative square root of 2 over 2. The sine is negative, we only have to look here and here. The sine is negative down here. So where is it negative square root of two over two? It is right here. We're not gonna call that seven pi over four. We're gonna call this one positive pi over four. We're gonna call this one negative pi over four. So this is negative pi over four. Now let's do the cosine. It's saying, where is the cosine? This is our theta, our angle measure. Where is the cosine of that angle measure going to give us an answer of negative square root of 3 over 2? Well, let's look at our unit circle. The cosine is positive here. The cosine is negative here. So if the cosine is positive here and the cosine is negative here, we want square root of 3 over 2, and that would be right here. So 5 pi over 6 is our answer. And then our last one, if this is theta, where is the tangent of theta equal to 1? Now let me just remind you some tangent values for a minute. The tangent of 0 is uh, 0. The tangent of square root of 3 over, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> the tangent of pi over 6 is um, square root of 3 over 3. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1. The tangent of uh, pi over 3 is square root of 3. The tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. Okay, so those are some nice tangent values to know. So they said, where is the tangent equal to 1? Well, the tangent is equal to 1 at um, pi over 4. So the answer is pi over 4. Square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 is 1. Uh, let's look at uh, these two examples. Where is the cosine uh, equal to negative square root of 2 over 2? So there's the, that answer is theta. The cosine of theta is negative square root of 2 over 2 at the pi over 4 that is in the second quadrant. So over here. And so that is 3 pi over 4. And then finally, our last one here, where is the arc cosine negative 2? Now, if we look, the cosine always has to be something between negative 1 and positive 1. Remember, that wave is going between negative 1 and positive 1. So if they say, where is the cosine equal to negative 2, that's impossible. So that's no solution. And if you tried to put that into a calculator, you would get a no solution answer. Let's take a look at this one. It says, evaluate the sine using the inverse sine of 0.97 using a calculator. Now, if it doesn't specify, please make sure it is in degree mode. And if you do the sine inverse of 0 0.97, only when you hit that second button will that little negative one appear. 
and then that is approximately 7.59 degrees. Okay. Now, in example three, for the first time, we are missing an angle that's on the inside. Well, what do we know? In relationship to where that angle is sitting, this is our adjacent, and this is our hypotenuse. And if we use Sokotoa, adjacent and hypotenuse is a cosine. So I know that the cosine of theta is 9 over 12. So when looking for an angle measure, that is when we use an inverse trig function. Sorry about that. And so we are going to hit the second button so that the little negative 1 appears. Make sure it's in degree mode, especially in a triangle. The inverse cosine of 9 over 12 is 41.4 degrees. Wait, let's write that differently. I'm sorry. The inverse cosine of 9 over 12 is 41.4 degrees. Now, when a triangle says to solve the triangle, then I want you to make sure all missing sides and angles are accounted for. To find this angle, we just have to subtract from 90. These two add up to 90 because 90 plus this 90 would give us the 180 we're looking for. So let's call this phi. That's a fun Greek letter to draw. Uh, phi then would be uh, 90 minus uh, 41.4. So phi would be 90 minus 41.4 is 48.6 degrees. And then if we wanted to find this side, we could use a Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully you know how to do that. Okay. This is your assignment. I've included a little nice right triangle right there for you. Um, I think it's on yours. We're only going to be doing the odds. And could you please skip this 30 through 32 for me. And we're going to do um, uh, number one, number seven. We'll do one from this section. We'll do some from that. Okay, so let's do problem number one together. So this is what I want to see on your paper. There's not much you have to write down. Write equals theta. Then I want you to switch it into its trig form uh, without the inverse on there. And so I want you to say that the sine of theta is 1 half. Then you're going to go to your unit circle using only the quadrants that, that a sine is allowed to use, negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And where is the sine equal to 1 half? Well, the y value that's equal to 1 half is right here. The answer is pi over 6. Now you're going to write theta equals pi over 6. So I just want to see for each the trig function and then your answer in radians, please. Now, the difference between 1 and 7 isn't much. We know that the sine of theta is negative 1 half. So what is theta? Well, pi over 6 in the first quadrant gave us positive 1 half. So negative pi over 6 gives us negative 1 half. What's great about sine, uh, what was it, sine, tangent, and cosecant maybe, that they use positives and negatives, and they get you positives and negatives, so it's really kind of nice. Okay, so that's all you're doing for 1 through 19 odds. Let's look at this little section here. Now here is a two-step problem. Wherever you see the angle measure, the negative one, you're looking for theta. So what angle measure is that? Well, we just found earlier that the sine inverse of 1 half was pi over 6. And then you say, what is the cosine of pi over 6 on the unit circle? So once you plop that in there, now you find the cosine of that. Well, the cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. So that is 21. That's how you're going to do those. It's like a two-step process. And then just show me this as you break it down. Start from the inside, work your way to the outside. Let's look now at 33 through 41. For 33 through uh, 
37, you're going to be using your calculator in degree mode. Let's go to the nearest tenth of a degree. 39 and 41, they want in a radius. Radians tenth is fine by me as well. And if you don't know how to switch from radians to degrees, let me know and I'll show you how to do that on your calculator. Okay? So that is that. And we're going to add one little thing. Um, we're going to put it right in this space right here, please. And just write, solve the triangle. We're going to put a theta right here. Um, let's make this um, here a... Um, so what was that other one? So I don't use the same numbers. Um, let's use, uh, let's go that this is uh, a 4 and this is a 10. And I want you to find all the missing sides and angles. So um, I want you to find this. I want you to find that. I want you to find theta and X please okay so that is your assignment good luck there you go